Happy Aloha Friday and welcome to Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Pro Hawaii program. This is your host, Beatrice Cantelmo. Most of us have heard about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights at some point in time. However, many people don't know what they are. Yet, these 30 articles are the milestone document in the history of human rights, drafted by representatives of a different legal and cultural backgrounds from all regions of the world. The declaration was proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly in Paris on December 10th of 1948 as a common standard of achievement for all people and nations. It sets out for the first time fundamental rights uh, that to be universally protected. Our democracy is supposed to promote and protect human rights for all people. But what happens when that is blatantly disregarded? Today, we have Carolyn Goyulu as our guest. And Carolyn is a social worker, an advocate, a Democrat, a taxpayer, a voter, <laughs> and of course, a wonderful dreamer. On May 4th of 2017, she wrote a very straightforward open letter to our legislators. As a constituent, we all should follow Carolyn's civic duty example and reach out to our legislators. The opening paragraph of Carolyn's letter to our legislators stated the following. Quote, I am proud to be a Democrat because we are supposed to be the party with the best interests of people at heart. I was proud of living in a blue state, but have serious questions if some legislators are respecting our state pride. Unfortunately, being a blue state has not been a reality in this 2017 session, end quote. Carolyn's letter addressed several bills that were important to the Democratic plat platform. Death with dignity, compassionate choices, ban on conversion therapy, safe haven bill for the protection of our at-risk youth living on the streets, open medical cannabis dispensaries, and the controversial railroad budget. Carolyn ended her letter with the following statement. Starting quote, I am a taxpayer, a voter in this state, and a person that values the democratic platform who needs an answer. We want accountability and transparency. Have you bothered to see the healthcare chaos in Washington, D.C.? Do you ever look at our actions and compare your actions with those in D.C.? In my opinion, Hawaii desperately needs you to vote for the best interests of the citizens of Hawaii. Stop installing. If you can't vote for justice at this late hour, you haven't done your job. And on that note, let's get started with our conversation, Carolyn. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> well, thank you, and thank you for having me today. This is a real treat. Absolutely, I know the treat is ours. So, to our viewers who have never uh, learned much about you, uh, would you mind give us a little background uh, about where you're from? Uh -oh, and I know okay. you're, you're, you've been an activist for uh, many years. Yes, <laughs> at least two. Well, I started in high school back in California, and um, I'm a Kennedy uh, Democrat. I like to say that because those were the days when we stood up, the Democrats stood up for our people. And I was born in Colorado, raised in Southern California. That's why I love Hawaii so much. I'm, I'm homesick if I don't see palm trees and the blue Pacific Ocean. So um, I married at a young age of 19, followed my husband around the world um, while he was in the Air Force. And one, our, set, our third to last assign, his third to last assignment was at uh, Hickam Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely fell in love. Um, I always grew to bloom where I was planted, but Hawaii is, is special. And it's, it's so, not just beautiful, but there's a spirit. And I think our spirit is being stifled right now by the political environment. Right, so let's talk a little bit about aloha spirit and where mm -hmm. do you see the stifling of it. <laughs> I, I am quite impressed uh, with uh, the open letter that you wrote to our legislators at the end of our legislative session. Well, and uh, I think a part of that is that you don't see many constituents really speaking from the heart, asking 
what has happened and uh, you were able to outline uh, uh, bills that you followed they were mm -hmm. important to you and to our state mm -hmm. and to many people who would have been positively impacted if uh, things went through uh, right. which it didn't so mm -hmm. let's talk about it okay well let's go yeah. ironically after I sent the letter out I also have a, a group of email friends and I sent it to them and one of them called me on the phone and said but you forgot that the last day of the session in the house right before the gavel was struck to end the session uh, everyone was told that the uh, raise for the foster families even though it was voted on and passed two years previously they said we will not be funding this this session and and session is over bang is that even constitutional to um, have passed a bill already well, two years ago <laughs> and are not funding it that's and, right and that puts us back uh, probably at the bottom of the barrel across the United States for the money that we give for the care and well-being of our foster children. And so, uh, to me, it's not constitutional, but mm -hmm. apparently they have taken things into their own hands. And ironically, they may have cost this state millions of dollars with that one little vote because of the it wasn't even a vote it was just a decision, a decision made on the made whenever and we could lose federal funds mm. because we've already been warned that we need to bring our they uh, foster families haven't had a raise in 22 years that's two decades wow no cost of living nada niente net <laughs> You made a point. <laughs> <laughs> so, without that money and the decision being mm -hmm. made at the very last minute before legislative mm -hmm. session ended, what now? How does that uh, reflect back to the families who mm -hmm. actually have children under their care, under the foster care system? And what's the plan moving forward? Uh, apparently, the legislature doesn't care. But I say that they need to become vocal. I'm a, I'm a big advocate for taking to the streets, mm -hmm. telling them in no uncertain terms. And um, there's, you know, there's all these naysayers out there. But think of that. If you personally had not had a cost of living wage increase in 22 years, how would you suffer? The price of milk goes up. The price of fresh fruits and vegetables goes up. Um, it's it's unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. But I think it's a reflection on uh, abuse of power. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know I'm not the favorite person that I used to be when I, I was. I know you for them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But the thing is, um, I'm a social worker. Yes. And I was a social worker before I went to UH mm -hmm. and received, uh, earned my degree. I was, I... I helped people in Europe because in Europe and your military you're isolated mm -hmm. and you don't have any city police state police to help you you have to make it on your own and so there were times when I did fund drives for um, families that were being separated from the military member mm -hmm. and being sent back uh, wanting to go back home because they were in situations that were abusive mm -hmm. and downright dangerous yes. and harmful for the children. And so helping them get out, telling them that there was help. And so uh, I really did. For doing that. Yeah, yes, you know, yes, it gave them hope. And yeah. And you know, what's very sad to me is to learn that the 12 bills that were introduced to this legislative session that mm -hmm. would protect our children and uh, survivors That's of right. domestic and sex violence right. were not passed. No, they weren't passed. Not one. And uh, compassion choices. I say that that bill is it not passing it is persecuting mm -hmm. those who need it.
because it's not a mandate. Not everyone has to make themselves available to it. It is a choice. And when you take people's choices away from them, that is forcing them to be a victim of the system. And right now they are. Well, not only that, I think it's a very controversial situation because people appeal to the part of uh, moral and religion, mm -hmm. which I can appreciate and respect. However, death mm -hmm. is not always pretty. That's right. And the end of life can be very lingering and painful. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't think that people who um, are in the position of lobbying against uh, mm -hmm. a measure like this uh, really take into consideration the quality of life and the mm -hmm. suffering of those who would otherwise have a choice. It's also a financial burden on the families mm -hmm. because uh, when they see their, their, their parent, their family member suffering, they're suffering in a hospital, in a hospice situation, and that's costing them every day. And life is more precious than money, but some people are t taking advantage of it. The Roman Catholic Church is the largest hospice owner in the state. So, in the state of Hawaii? Yes, in I the state of Hawaii. That. I Googled that. I Googled that. Oh. I just Googled um, Hospice uh, Hawaii, and I, I read their pamphlet online. Mm -hmm. And I went, and they brag about being the, the largest service of hospice service in the state. So see, there was money involved, even though they said it was all a moral issue. Well, I thought we were supposed to be our brothers and sisters uh, caretakers. I didn't think we were supposed to force them into a painful death when we are at the state where we can help people. And um, one of the things I said, because I was terrifically upset, and yet when I talked to some of the people in the House, because the House was the one, the Senate passed that bill 22 to 3. And when I said, well, this is great. You had the support of the Senate, 22 to 3. And I was told, we are not a rubber stamp for the Senate. And I said, that's not what I'm saying. I am saying you had support. And that's one of the really basic things that I see um, having a problem over at the Capitol is getting the, the people to work together. It's not a competition. If it's a competition, I'd like to see it a competition for helping people. Who can help the people the best? Who can make their end of life's choices? And no one chooses to die. None of us do. But that is a fact of life. What, what are they say? Do it. Yeah. Taxes and death. Taxes and, and death. So let's take a little break and then uh, on our sec second segment we'll talk a little bit more about that and okay. all the bills, right? Okay, <laughs> that's good. So. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king come banging on your chest, you can beat the world, you can beat the war, you could talk to God, go banging on his door, you can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock, you can move a mountain, you can break rocks. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. Welcome back to Perspectives on Global Justice. Yeah, right. This is yes. your host, Beatrice Cantello, and uh, we have Carolyn Goliou with us. So, Carolyn, we took a little break, mm -hmm. and uh, I know that some people uh, may have a misconception that um, your passion is about anger. 
No. So let's talk about that as an activist because I can That's relate right. to that. That's anyway. right. Well, someone, a few people have said, oh, you're so angry. And I have learned to counter that with saying, you mistake my anger because it's really passion. When I believe in something wholeheartedly, I go for it. I have t I've spent a lot of my years being silent, you know, as a, you know, as a good, dutiful wife and as a good Catholic girl, you don't, don't, don't have thoughts of your own, don't speak out, you j and, and I'm, I'm on my um, second lifetime, <laughs> and it's going to be done speaking out so that no one mistakes that my silence is in agreement with any of the situations that we right. talked about. Right. You know. And that passion is very necessary. And mm -hmm. uh, I feel like if we're not outraged mm -hmm. about what's happening, we're not paying attention. And I think it's exactly. impossible not to be outraged because right now, I think we're getting bombarded with so much injustice right. and unfairness from every single direction, from a federal level or at a state level. Mm -hmm. That's right. There's no even like breaks or times to breathe because every day is something new. That's and, right. And uh, I feel at least like at a state level, there is a little bit more leverage to be able to uh, negotiate mm -hmm. uh, some of uh, the decision making and the policy making process. Mm -hmm. And I think one observation you made is that even when the people support a certain measure, mm -hmm. that is not being respected in lieu of lobbying from mm -hmm. uh, other, you know, parties or political mm -hmm. favors right. and uh, I'm glad that you know you're passionate and there are other people they are passionate say ah uh -uh, this That's has right. got to stop and we do need transparency and accountability and much needed reforms That's so right. along with those lines I know that there are other uh, bills that were quite uh, important to you yes and that to others as well so you want to talk right. about it um, well one of the bills and it 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 just numbers of bills don't even matter anymore because once a session ends uh, those bill numbers are no more and they create new bill numbers it, because we have a biannual um, House and Senate and so some of the bill the bills that were entered this year have two years and so they can be looked at again next year and so that's why I want to get people active and motivated you know um, a postcard even and we had a postcard um, uh, event recently. Yes, and uh, that was that was, light <laughs> this show for the Chechen. <laughs> That's right. Um, Prisoners. Th uh, that was Chechnya yeah. in Russia, yeah. where and that goes against our Declaration of uh, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We have a life. We have a right to live without persecution, without torture, and um, thank goodness we have the United Nations. They funded a study. And in that study, and they documented it. So it's not someone's idea or they're trying to. It's doc, well documented that in Chesnia, which is part of Russia, they were rounding up, kidnapping, torturing, and killing okay. some of our gay men. And, you know, that ran chills through me because us as Americans came to this continent because we were running from persecution, religious persecution in Europe. Now I want to run back to Europe because they certainly have a better handle on it. <laughs> no, but, no, don't run away. The, <laughs> don't the, run the, away. the trick is stay and <laughs> fight. I think what Being most persistent. people exactly what most people don't understand uh, is that United Nations, um, Amnesty International, any organization that uh, works with human rights, That's we right. can come up with the reporting. That's right. And uh, the exposure, the awareness, mm -hmm. and the education, That's and right. the advocacy part for lobbying for different outcomes. But in truth, uh, it is the people and That's the pressure that the people put mm -hmm. on those matters that becomes priority in a certain country or a state 
is what moves things ahead. That's right. Uh, the you know UN uh, amnesty women's we don't have the power in itself alone to change right. things, but it is the collective effort and mm -hmm. the civic engagement of the people that right. make those differences. I wish we could clone you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because look at all the other people. Look yeah. at uh, Teresa Shook from um, Maui that started the Women's March on Washington, Washington that changed the world. Women came out in bigger numbers across the globe yes. than they'd ever come before. And one of the best things to be said about it, it was the most peaceful march on the face of this earth. Mm -hmm. That shows that we aren't angry, but we want change. We have to see uh, equal rights for in wages, mm -hmm. uh, fair pay for equal hours. We need to have I'm sexism leave, uh, scratched yeah. off the, you know, no we can't misogyny. even. That's <laughs> right, you know. And so from that, Sherry uh, Campania and I were talking one day, and Chesnia came up. And between the two of us, we came up with this, okay, we're going to have a candlelight vigil, and we're going to have people sign cards, thank you postcards. And we wanted them for people to buy different types of po beautiful postcards from Hawaii, right. letting them know that we appreciated the fact that they were willing to spend their money, spend their time and their talent, and document this horrific Horrific. And I think about it. Had we had a United Nations, which we didn't back before World War II, mm -hmm. we could have stopped it. We could, if we knew that people were being put on trains and taken to extermination camps, that could have been stopped. So there is great hope, but it takes great action. Absolutely. Yes. That's it. Yes. That's and, it. And that has to be an ongoing process. And That's right. My biggest hope uh, in the upcoming future yes. is that not only we have more voters registered to do the voting That's and right. to be more civically engaged, That's right. but that we also have more balance uh, That's right. in every segment of government uh, in, in regards to gender equity, That's right. uh, ethnicity. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would like an age. You know, I would love That's right. to see. Oh, ages. We haven't even touched on that one yet. So, um, back on the tangents of oh, what okay. has happened here okay. in Hawaii with our legislative session, which I think a lot of people were very unhappy. I know one thing uh, that really shocked me uh, was the bill that would allocate funding for runaway youth to be. Um, yes. in shelters and, not, and also uh, new uh, laws that would allow a minor mm -hmm. to register in the shelter system, That's which right. is not possible. It's not possible. Yeah. They have to have a parent's signature. Now, if they're running away from home from abuse, if they've been thrown out of their home, um, there are those who, uh, young women, who end up with child, pregnant, and their family goes, sorry, uh, our religion doesn't approve of that, and throws them out. At the moment that they need the most help, they're on the street. If they're being harassed at school because someone even thinks they're gay, you know, and there was an, a comedian back in the 60s that used to say something about a camera. Uh, children, if I don't like my child, it was supposed to be a joke, but apparently it's taken hold. If I don't like my, ch ch uh, my child, I can just take another picture. Those were the days of, the, remember, the, the cameras flash, and, and you'd wait for it to come out, and as you watched, it would... It would just come up. Yeah. And so children are not accessories. Children are not uh, a status symbol. Children are there because you love them. If you can't love them, if you can't protect them and provide for them, then give them up. There's so many people wanting to have children who can't for whatever reason. Don't be selfish and keep them and then abuse them, neglect them, because neglect is abuse. And so it's, but this state 
has to get rid of that archaic law that says uh, a child has to have the signature and approval of one of the parents. And that law was started year, decades and decades ago because of divorce. They didn't want um, one parent to get it and whatever. they, And so that's what they wrote into it. So, well, we are going to pretty much bring that up in the future. I'm That's pretty right. sure because uh, the bill, you know, that was proposed. It's going to be. Uh, it's, we're not going it, away. It, it, we're exactly. not going and away. And it's not reflective of today's reality. So mm -hmm. it needs to be amended uh, That's right. to ensure... Well, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would like to offer an opportunity to your uh, viewers, and that is on Thursday afternoons from 4 to 6, we gather at the Capitol, and this week, every week I have another different sign. This week my sign was more jobs, no hiring freeze because that is a federal mandate that has come down that's already affecting our people. The uh, care and the uh, process within federal buildings mm -hmm. are, are stymied right now. Yeah. And what does that mean to us? People aren't being given good jobs with health care and with holidays and vacation times. And those aren't a privilege, those are a right. You have to replenish your body and your mind. You can't when you have to work every day, when you have to work three jobs. And now this is one more. How we'll know whether or not this is totally damaged to us to how many more homeless people and homeless families end up on the streets. Absolutely. And so well, I you can't. have to stand up and be yeah. counted. Yes, absolutely. So I can't believe that our 30 minutes have passed. Oh my. <laughs> However, uh, may this be the first of many visits that okay. uh, we have together and that That's we right. converse in more depth about all the issues. That's right. I want to thank you so much from the heart for all of the beautiful work that you do oh, well. as a social worker, as an activist, uh, as a sister. And we, in, we met. Uh, in the middle of the, the field. Yes, you know, yes, so we, like, we are not alone. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, well, that concludes uh, our show for today. And uh, um, thank you again. Thank you. And uh, I look forward uh, to seeing you again oh, you many will. times. Thank you. And I want to thank our viewers uh, for being here with us. And uh, join us again next Friday. And uh, until then, ahoy ho.